Hello. I suggest you crochet a beautiful openwork square napkin consisting of square motifs. I knitted these motifs from thin cotton. In 50 grams I have 280 meters and a thin hook 0.75 millimeters. Knitting of this square motif starts from the middle and consists of a square motif of only three rows. We perform the first loop. And we will tie a chain of 12 air loops. The first loop, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh and twelfth air loop. Now we close the resulting chain into a ring. We have a semicircle. Insert the hook into the very first air loop, stretch the working loop through the first loop, while the tail conveniently bends and remains in the middle of the next row. Then we perform four air lifting loops, three capes on the hook, we wind the hook into a ring, we tie a column with three capes. The first cape was tied, the second cape was tied and the third cape was tied. We leave the column open on the hook. Once again, three capes on the hook, we start the hook in a ring, we tie the second column with three capes. We leave the column open on the hook. Once again, three capes on the hook, a column with three capes, now we will tie all the loops together, fix the air. It turned out the first lush column, the first petal. Then we perform six air loops. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth air loop. Once again, three capes on the hook. We will tie the next petal. First, the first column with three capes, then the second column with three capes, the third column with three capes and the fourth column with three capes. Now we will tie all the loops with one loop. We fix it with air. We perform six air loops and we will tie the same petals here in the same way. In total, it is necessary to tie six lush columns. It is necessary to tie eight lush columns, eight petals into a ring, six air loops between them. At the end, six air loops were also tied. Now let's tie the connecting column. We wind the hook into the very first air loop, grab the working loop and pull it through the main loop. Then we perform one air loop, wind up the hook under the air chain and tie five columns without a cape. The first column, the second column, the third column, the fourth and fifth column without a cape. Then we perform four air loops, from which we will tie a peak. We start the hook in the base, we tie the connecting column. It turns out that such a bump is pico. Then, from the second half of the arch, we will knit five columns without a cape. The first column, the second column, the third, fourth and fifth column without a cape, we will tie exactly the same columns without a cape into the next arch. First, five columns without a cape, the first column, the second column, the third, the fourth and the fifth column without a cape.
Then a peak of four air loops, four air loops, a connecting column at the base of the air chain and also five columns without a cape on the other half of this arch. Now, having tied this arch, we will perform the corner of the square. For this corner, we dial 15 air loops. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth air loops. We release the working loop, insert the hook into the beginning of the arch, stretch the working loop through this loop of the base and now tie the resulting arch of 15 air loops with columns without a cape. It is necessary to tie 22 columns without a cape so, we will tie 22 columns without a cape, we have tied 22 columns without a cape. At the end, we will tie the connecting column. We insert the hook into the column without a cape, grab the loop and pull it through the main loop. Further knitting of this row will also continue. We will tie the next arch with 5 columns without a cape, then in the middle we perform a peak of 4 air loops again 5 columns without a cape, the next arch also 5 5 columns without a cape then a peak of four air loops and five columns without a cape, we tied two more arches and now we will perform a corner over the next second arch. In the same way, we perform 15 air loops. We release the working loop, insert the hook between the arches, stretch the working loop and tie the resulting corner with 22 columns without a cape. We will tie 22 columns without a cape in the same way as we tied 22 columns without a cape here. We tied the whole row to the end, completing four corners. At the end, a connecting column was also tied. Now, to make the transition to the next row, it is necessary to transfer the working loop to the top of this pico, so we will tie the connecting columns. We start the hook in the next loop, grab the loop and pull it through the main loop. In the same way, a loop was captured in the next one and stretched through the main loop into the next loop now under the peak and we bring the hook into the pico itself, also a connecting column, an air loop on top. Now the working loop remains on the top of the pico. Then we will link the next row. We perform four air loops, one cape on the hook, 
we count the sixth loop along this arch. The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth loops. Let's tie a column with one cape on top of this column and perform a pico of three air loops. Three air loops, a connecting column at the base of this pico, then three air loops, one cape on the hook, we skip one loop, we tie a column with one cape into the next and then three air loops on top of the pico. In total, it is necessary to tie seven columns with one cape and perform a pico of three air loops on top of each column. Then we perform four air loops. The first, second, third, and fourth. We start the hook in the pico, we tie the connecting column. Stretch the loop stretch through the main loop. In this way we will tie all the corners. We will tie the next corner in the same way, performing seven columns with one cape and tying a pico of three air loops on top of each column. In order to connect the motifs together into a single whole canvas. The motif that we knit, we do not tie to the end. And in the process of knitting the last row, we will connect the motifs together. They connect behind the pico. Two picots on each motif. Here I will connect this side of the square and this side of the square. I completed four peaks and tied the fifth column with one cape. Now I will perform a peak over the fifth column and connect it with this peak. I tied two air loops, let go into the working loop, insert the hook into the peak, with which I plan to connect, then I stretch the working loop through this pico and perform two more air loops. A connecting column at the base of this pico, just like a pico would knit. And then, according to the drawing, I tie three air loops, one cape on the hook, I skip one loop of the base, in the next I will tie a column with one cape. Further above this column I also bake, which I will connect. I perform two air loops, release the working loop. Insert the hook into the oven with which I plan to connect, stretch the working loop, perform two more air loops and a connecting column into the base of this pico. Further along the picture there are three air loops. This is what this connection of two peaks turns out to be. Then I tied this side of the square in the same way, connecting the next two baking with each other. Then we skip the baking in the middle and tie this side of the square in the same way, connecting two more picots on each arch. I tied this side of the square to the end in the same way as I knitted from this side. That's how the connection turned out.